Today, we're here at the track where rivalries can not only blossom, but they can turn into full-scale automotive war. Bristol Motor Speedway. Let's try to avoid creating as many enemies as, uh, well, let's see. I don't know. As many enemies as I have already uh, creating more of those here at Bristol. Let's get qualified, shall we? So I decided to be pretty conservative on the qualifying lap, but apparently conservatism was not the way to go on that one. What a shocker. 30th place. Thankfully, my uh, main rival, Jeffrey Earnhardt, is starting literally last. So we at least have that to avoid as we go racing here at uh, Bristol and PRN gets us started. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Bristol Motor Speedway for today's race, the Food City 500 on PRN. Bristol is one of the most famous tracks in NASCAR, mostly due to the close racing and all of the beating and banging that goes on out there. These drivers will have to leave their feelings at the door before strapping into their cars and entering the bull ring. I have a sneaking suspicion people aren't going to leave their feelings at the door when I run into them today, but we'll see if we can just have a fairly clean race. Obviously conservatism and qualifying wasn't a good idea, but I suspect in the race it'll be a much different scenario. So everybody's running up top, as they usually do at Bristol. It's one of the two tracks in this game where you kind of see the AI take a... Stay low. Oh, line. Well, sorry, Busher. A slightly unconventional line is we're going to push up into Busher. So we, we hit him going in, and then we pushed up into him coming out, which is not the best thing in the entire world. But now we're having a little bit more success here on the bottom. Running in behind Danica Patrick. On the brakes. They're three wide. We're just going to hang back here a little bit. There's a Sport Clips car. Got my hair cut there. So uh, glad to see they're involved in not only IndyCar racing, but also obviously NASCAR. Because uh, back in the Spin Master NASCAR Authentics days, of course, the Sport Clips car was one of the big selling points of uh, NASCAR Authentics at that point. It's Casey Kane running me low. They're three wide out in front. Danica's is actually making some headway on the bottom. There's Jamie McFlurry up there, but we made a little bit of contact with our teammate Casey Kane. Kane. Of course, we hit him at Texas as well, so we got to be careful not to do that. Yeah, the car's just not quite handling very well. Definitely right. pushing quite a bit in the center. And now able to get the drive off that I'd like. So that's a, that's a bit of a problem. Because it just All means right. I'm going to be terrible in traffic. Clear, clear. And of course, traffic is such a major key to a Bristol race. Oh, as we just completely run All up clear. the road into uh, Clint Boyer and, uh, by extension, David Reagan. Reagan is one of the guys who's right on the cusp of becoming a rival. So we need to be very careful with him as Casey hey, Kane right gets there. out of my way. Very nice of him to do so. Or I guess he's being a good teammate there. As we'll sneak underneath. We have 24, of course, Here to go on the stage. Atlanta Castle was not nice to me earlier, but thankfully we're going to be able to slide underneath him and keep going. Now Matt De Benedetto, who uh, had a pretty good run here in real life, so if we're around De Benedetto, we're probably in good shape. Stay low. Hold your line. But that was not a good corner. So I'm just trying not to hit people. We just barely tapped Blaney there. Blaney's actually going to make the move because he was able to get to that inside, and that inside seems to be the fast part of the racetrack. Everybody Still running there. up top. But I don't think it's very Arlo. much faster as you can see everybody able to get underneath me there so we're going to slide in behind castle here try to get to the inside not quite going to be able to do so so we've only really gained seven positions driving Hold as conservatively as we possibly can Car there. it still wasn't enough i'm glad to save that one but here comes david reagan and we don't want to make too much contact with Stay him right like there. i said he's Fixing to be a rival. So we send it down the inside underneath Trevor Bain. But we hold on to it for now. Lift off the gas, dive it in there on the brakes just a little bit. Okay, we're starting to get a little bit, a little bit faster. Thankfully, being halfway up the grid like we are right now, we won't have to worry too much about being lapped at least in this first stage. We stay back here for the second, third, and hold your line. Oh, there is a fourth top. stage, but. You get my drift. If we stay back here for too long, we're going to be in trouble. Make a little bit of more contact with Landon Castle to get it slid down Careful. underneath him. Try to get the good drive off. 
Oh, and put him in the wall. That was, uh, and that brings out the yellow. What a shocker that is. Well, I was hoping we'd run a bit of a caution-free run, but that's not going to happen. Still on the top lane, not very happy about that. We made 10 positions up before the first caution flag of the day, so I guess that's a positive. We can see the front row. As I tried to drive around Stenhouse there, it didn't quite work out for me. I tried to clear him before the finish line. That would be a, that's a penalty. Going before the GACO restart zone is a penalty. Anyway, there's Chase going very slow. All right. Oh, and he didn't like that commentary on him, so he'll try to fight back Clear. on the outside. We'll keep working this bottom here, especially on old tires. I feel like it's a little bit better because the oh, car's a little oh, bit looser. Right there. But I'll definitely loosen it up on the first pit stop. Not going to loosen it up too much because I feel Stay like we're right going to have there. trouble if I do that. We've got 12 laps to go on the Stay stage, on. so it must have been a pretty short right caution. Outside. That's a big send. That was a big send underneath All McFlurry. Right. <laughs> we keep making contact with him. And finally get underneath him, but All Stenhouse right. has, well, never mind. We were underneath him, and then the turkey car gets me back. And uh, David Reagan's still just hanging with me. He's just trying to stay right there, so if I touch him once, he can have an excuse to become a full-on rival. At that time, it was much better through three and four and got underneath Stenhouse, block him up top because he's got that run up at the top with the momentum. So we have a turkey car and a duck car because uh, Truex, it says ducks on the side of his car. I, I'm pretty sure I'm not making that up. We'll have to see once we get alongside of him. So we got turkeys and ducks at Bristol. Oh my. Oh really, that's a duck on the side of his car. Turkeys and ducks, everybody. This is, this is, this is where we are. This is really happening. Car outside. I'm not dreaming. Underneath the duck car. So put another car between us and Reagan, which is a good thing. There's three wide still out in front. Kevin Harvick running 12th. Getting past for 12th by Matt Kenseth. Kurt Busch is well up in this mix. We're gonna work to the inside. And couldn't quite clear him. So diving down once again, everybody Still working the top lane, which is kind of interesting. Not really sure what's going on there, and it was almost big trouble with Kurt Busch. Thankfully, we held on to it once again. And I'm really starting to make some good time up through the field, so hopefully, stay right there. We'll just keep this race clean and green till the end of the stage. Make a few adjustments. I think we're going to be okie dokie. Hold your line. I think we'll be all right in terms of handling of the car, especially once we loosen it up a little bit, because it is very, very tight, but it's also not really trying to bite me on the entry to the corner. There's not really a loose condition at all at the moment. It's very, very tight. So as long as we make a fairly small adjustment, I think we'll be all right. That's probably going to be another yellow. Yep, and that'll end the stage. Well, okay. That's fine. Almost got to the top 10. Get get them playoff points, but uh, didn't quite work out for me. Nobody pitting. Really? Nobody pitting. Should we pit them? I almost think we're going to have to, right? We better do it quick. I'm going to pit. I'm going to pit. We're going to do it under the caution flag because that's better than doing it under the green. We're going to go back to 46.4. We did get that in before before it decided to change. Boy, it was close. Almost I got it pretty close there. So here we go. Back to racing. we got to be careful. I lift it off because Sadler to the inside is another guy who's right on the precipice of becoming a rival. So we've got now 32 laps in the fuel tank. And the stage is 31 laps, so that was Perfect timing from us. Keep it right there. Now it's going to be all about getting through this field and trying to do it as efficiently and uh, kindly as possible. That's not kindly. Hopefully Sadler won't hate me for that or that contact. Keep it right there. But now we know we got Earnhardt. We're going to have to get by Earnhardt without too much trouble here because he is a rival. He is Jeffrey Earnhardt. Oh, Joey Gase just decided to cut me off there. But thankfully, by Pushing Joey Gase into the corner like that. 
He kept Jeffrey Earnhardt at bay. And we'll get it into turns one and two. Or three and four, excuse me. I lost track of where I was because I was watching Joey Gase almost spit out. <laughs> and get away from Jeffrey Earnhardt. So maybe we uh, made Gase a rival, but maybe we've uh, helped cool things off a little bit with Earnhardt. We'll see. That was just touching the wall for absolutely no discernible reason. Hold your line. So this should work into our favor Are outside. to uh, have come in on that stage break. Surprised. No one else did. And again, that's the second time I've put caution somebody in the wall out. there. And the next time it's brought out a caution, which is unfortunate because instead of being laps up on the field, we're just going to have really, really super good track position. With Timmy Hill on the outside, along with Ty Dillon and Cole Witt, DJ Kennington, Jeffrey, well, we got a lot of, let's Almost say, uh, speed okay. challenge Four folks with us up here. So that's, uh, that only works in our favor. Look at that drive off of the restart. And now let's see if we can get it going here. With all those slower cars behind. In fact, they may need, may, uh, no, they won't be able to make it. I was going to say, maybe they'll be able to make it to the end. They're, uh, I guess, banking on another yellow uh, for track position there. Or maybe a lot of yellow. Because, uh, of course, I pitted with 14 laps remaining in our fuel tank. And uh, it's significantly less for theirs now. So... It's a bold strategy, but I don't think it's really going to work out for them. Ty Dillon, for whatever reason, in this series so far, has been the master of the fuel economy. He was this way at Phoenix, Texas, a few other places where Ty was running up front just because he was one of the faster guys at the back who just said, hey, you know what, I'm going to stay out. And it's working out for him again with second place. DJ Kennington in third, Cody Ware, or now Eric Almarola on fresh tires. And the guy who's kind of been leading this race uh, most of the time now working his way up into third place. So we've got to try to stay away from Al Marola as best we can because he is coming through the field. Of course, him being on fresh tires, us uh, not quite uh, as fresh a tires as his. And I still don't feel the car's quite handling the way I would like it to. Not quite there yet. Again, it's a long race. Lots of adjustments can be made. And again, we're here three seconds ahead of the rest of the field as Danica Patrick and Eric Jones now move up into this mix. So there's a couple more cars that I believe came into the pit. So there's your real running order almost. Is it's me, Almarola, Danica, and Eric Jones. Now Daniel Suarez moves up into there. So all the uh, slower cars have kind of been moved out of the serial. And now it's back to a fairly, fairly legitimate contest between the fastest cars right now. And Jones moves past Danica. Well, it's because everybody came into the pits. That would explain it. So they, uh, those people uh, made a bad choice, I would say, because now they are way, way down the order. They're going to be multiple laps down because, of course, I will not have to pit, especially with the aid of the yellow. So they were hoping for a yellow. They did not get it. We'll just keep this race green for now. Almarola almost four seconds behind right now at three and a half. I'm closing it a little bit as we lose time by smacking walls and other silly nonsense with 14 laps to go on the stage. So this is where we could have made it from the last time. We've got 21 laps in the tank now. And it will be interesting to see if whether or not everybody's going to come into the pits at the end of this stage because... It's going to make uh, real, the real, or it's going to tell the real tale, I should say, of the final stage. Is how is that fuel strategy going to work out? Especially now that I've kind of split the strategy. We've made one less pit stop. That, well, I guess we've made one more pit stop than everybody else. But we've been able to manage everything a little bit better in terms of the yellows. Now we're coming up on traffic, which will add another whole layer to this thing. Al Almirola has not really fallen off the pace too much. 3.8 seconds, that's definitely what I would describe as striking distance uh, for traffic because that is an awful lot of cars going through one and two as we are just entering now. So we're about two corners behind right now with 10 laps to go on the stage. Uh, we probably will catch the back of this field. I'm going to be a little bit concerned where Jeffrey Earnhardt may end up being 
in this pack because he's going to, again, try to try to take us out if he can, I suspect. So hard on the throttle. That was a pretty decent corner, if I may say so myself. Well, it looks like we've got a lot of slow cars as well in there. Looked like Ty Dillon going... Oh, Chris Busher puts uh, Elliot Sadler in the wall. So this may bring out the caution. Easy. So we make a little bit of contact with Sadler, who's running in stone dead last. But Chris Busher coming into the pits. And that's the end of his race, I suspect. As we made a little bit more contact with Sadler, which makes me suspect we're probably going to have a rivalry with him even though we were lapping him again as he's running in 40th position, now 39th with the uh, loss of Busher. We've got six laps to go on the stage. I'd like to put a few more cars lapped down just to kind of have a little bit more cushion. The more cars I put laps down, the better I feel about my chances because there's the less cars I have to race. Coming up behind Corey LaJoy, almost pushing up into the wall. So it almost feels like it'll loosen up the car even more on the next stop. I'm trying to make adjustments that aren't like earth shattering to my car. Because if I make really, really earth shattering adjustments, that's just how you lead to spin outs and everybody gets mad in the comments. And that's no fun. So here we go. Four laps remaining. This is an angry, angry horde of cars right here. Hold your line. Just got to make sure we stay away from Earnhardt. Clear high. Which we do. Slide it down underneath. Corey LaJoy, a little bit of contact. Not too much, slide it in there a little bit. Use, use Corey LaJoy up just a little bit more. Why not? DJ Kennington going yet another lap down. Of course, he was another one of those cars that pitted. Matt DiBenedetto now going to be trying to fight for the lead lap. I don't think he's going to be able to stay on it here with two laps to go. He gets out of the way. Hold your line. And we make contact. Is that going to bring out the yellow? Car outside. Oh, make contact with Reagan. That's exactly what I didn't want to do. Now we'll hold on to it for now. Slide it down into the corner. And there's a yellow. Interesting. So it came out with one lap to go in the stage. We'll take a playoff point uh, and 10 championship points. And nobody coming into the pit with 11 laps to go. In the, well, we got one. We've got Stenhouse coming into the pits. If I pit now, though, I can split it. So what we're going to do is come in because we can split 65 laps the rest of the way. Again, making pit stops under the yellow is better than under the green. I don't even care that we're restarting 26th with 28 cars on the lead lap because this should all work out for us, especially considering the fuel mileage gain. So see if we can work traffic a little bit better. Okay, We've loosened that up the car point. once again. And being up top is not really where I want to be, so we're going to slot in behind Stenhouse. Oh, yeah, look at that. The car is sufficiently loose now, but it may be the right balance. You're always looking for that balance. I think we've got it right now. So we work underneath T-Bane. And McDowell almost making a little bit of contact there. We hold on to it. We're about to break up into a legitimate top 20, which is always nice. So if we can make one last pit stop than everybody else, it's going to be fantastic. And even more, fa more fantastic. More and more fantastic. Yes, that sounds right. Uh, more and more fantastic is going to be the fact that uh, we're going to be lapsed up on the rest of the field. Sorry, Blaney. That was been. Keep low. Hold your line. Car Thank eye. you. Okay. Uh, we're going to be laps up on the You're field. Car so, should the caution come out, we'll be able to benefit by uh, having that cushion. That cushion is so important, especially Stay in a short low. track, because as we found out at Martinsville. <laughs> uh, as we found out at Martinsville. You don't want to be the first guy to pit because you will get caught laps down because the yellow will come out while you're in the stop. And uh, that's no, that's big trouble. So we just slide underneath Blaney, really racing hard with Blaney here, but finally get to the inside and pass him. Now we've got Matt Kenseth battling with Austin Dillon up here. 
and hopefully we can get up into this fight as well with 56 laps to go and the fuel is 28 so that's working out pretty swimmingly right now when are the rest of the field going to come in though that's going to be the question as we slide underneath Ty Dillon, wonder if New Era makes a cowboy hat. Has anyone made that joke before? Ay, 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 that's contact. And we'll slide it down into the corner once again. Almost called it one and two, but I realized it was three and four, and I said, David, let's not do that. Car ahead is pitting. That is Ryan Newman. So we've already got cars, leaders coming in. It looks like Truex and Johnson as well. So we slide it underneath Austin Dillon. Hard on the throttle, so it looks like everybody's coming in this time around. So here comes our game. Have we played it right? Car in front of us, headed to the pit. And here they come. So it looks like Danica Patrick is coming in, so Paul Menard will now go into the lead or second. Eric Jones leads from Paul Menard from us. Austin Dillon still behind us, but losing quite a lot of ground. Now into the pits come the leaders, and out of the pits come the rest of the leaders. But the leaders are now slowly turning into the folks who uh, are no longer leading the race and are going to be several laps down as we come into the lead. So Ricky Stenhouse will move up to second. Michael McDowell will be third, Joey Gase fourth, and Austin Dillon fifth, but Austin Dillon is coming into the pit. So this is going to get wild. This is going to be a lot of different cars on different strategies with different tires. And a lot of different speeds all coming together as they exit the pits and look at this cluster coming down here and coming out of the pits as well look like Casey Kane got held up just a little bit there it's all kicking off as we're about to lap up to 19th position here with Kyle Busch it looks like well now 16th so as we come around we're, we're just uh, these guys are picking up more positions and that means we're lapping more cars as there are still three cars in the lead lap with Gase and uh, Stenhouse. I think Stenhouse is on our strategy. He's two and a half seconds Hold behind. So that's an interesting contrast there. So at least one car has potential to make the same kind of moves that we're making right now. As McFlurry keeps working that high side a little bit better than we're able to work the bottom as we dive it up the inside make a little bit of contact drive it off the corner almost as good of a run as McFlurry as we slide it down into one and two and finally clear McFlurry so that's very good Paul Menard now runs third the first of the cars on his particular strategy which is interesting if that strategy ends up working out for him, that means Paul Menard will take a victory. But right now, they're only one lap behind the race. I would like to put them two laps down. Why? Well, if they get a wave around under a yellow, should it come out, uh, they will not be on the lead lap still. It's all about that cushion. This Truex is right out in front. 44 laps to go, looking at the fuel, 18 in the tank. Fuel tank lasts us about 32 laps, so do the math. Keep it right there. We're trying to work underneath Truex, can't quite get him. A couple of the furniture row racing cars, in fact, in front of us. In fact, both of the furniture row cars, I shouldn't say both of them, or two of them, because that would imply there's more than two. There's only two, and they're both in front of us, and Hold now we're line. trying to slide to the inside. Truex will clear Jones. We're not able to quite get there. Some of the back markers are coming into the pits as well. Car there. So they will go even more laps behind the race. That's DJ Kennington right Stay directly low. out in front of us. Clear high. So we clear Jones. Kennington holds up Truex just a little bit. Just trying to get that drive off. Couldn't quite get it because Still Kennington there. was kind of holding up the uh, top lane there. Truex manages to pull away just a little bit in the traffic. We'll dive it up the inside, not quite able Hold to get line. to his door. Which is kind of where you can clear people. Dive it down once again. And Paul Menard has lost a lot of positions right now. So unfortunate for him, it's now Kevin Harvick in that spot that is so important. And lap cars are now 
kind of getting in the mix here because they came out of the pits. We haven't even really caught the back of the field yet. I'm sure we will. These are just pit strategy cars that we're catching right now, including uh, Cody Ware and uh, Elliot Sadler, who's uh, being boxed up to the top by Denny Hamlin. So we'll dive it off into one and two. Off the accelerator, and almost getting up into the wall. That's going to allow Kyle Busch to get his lap back. One of his laps back. That's DJ Kennington coming back out of the pit. So clearly DJ Kennington uh, has spent a lot of time in the pits because we lapped him once. Now we're lapping him again on track as Truex is caught in traffic. It's going to allow Kyle Busch to get underneath, which is interesting. All right. Now we'll try to shove it up underneath both of them. We're able to get to Kyle Busch's door. We'll be able to sneak it all the way down the inside. Yes, we will. A little bit of contact with DJ. And into the wall goes Kennington. No caution. No caution, thank God. But Truex has been able to get back around Kyle Busch. And now McFlurry is back up into this mix. As I slid it through one and two, and that allowed McFlurry and Busch to try to get some laps back on me. Still running the top lane, not really where I want to be. As you can see, the car pushed up almost into the wall, 34 laps to go. So we're almost in the pit window with 10 laps remaining on the fuel which is fantastic. So here comes Larson looking to the inside but can't quite clear the pass. We're going to try to stick this out as long as we can. If there is a yellow, it's Hold better to have the yellow there. come out uh, when we're on track than in the pits. For the reasons stated previously in this video, we slide it all the way through one and two. Three and four. David, get the end of the track correct for the love of God. Stenhouse is 7.1 seconds behind, so he's really falling off the pace. Larson's still looking to the inside, can't quite get there. The turkey has passed the duck. Flurry goes around, and here comes Larson to the inside, so Senpai is going to go through. Maybe. Now he goes through. But the closer we get to these lap cars, I guess everybody's a lap car right now except for Stenhouse, but the slow cars, the closer we get to the slow cars, the more chaotic this is going to get. As you can see, McFlurry trying to get underneath Carl Long, as well as Kyle Busch trying to get underneath there. Ty Dillon slowing them up as well. And we are definitely going slower as well because we are on old tires. And these old tires not quite doing the, doing the job that they used to be able to do. We've got six laps on the fuel tank, so we're good. Just stay out for a little bit longer. We're not losing a terrible amount of time. Oh, as I almost get up in the wall there, that was a little too much push. But once we get on the fresh tires, I think we'll be we'll be tearing the track down. If it stays green, I'll be a monkey's uncle. I suspect it won't. As a Jimmy Johnson making the move around the outside, you can see the difference between old and new tires. It's pretty significant. But again, we want to be the last guys on new tires. So that means our tires will be the freshest as Stenhouse is in. So it's Ricky Stenhouse, pits from second. We will lap him. And now Ryan Newman is running in the third spot. Will probably come up and take second. Yes, he does from Stenhouse. So to pass me, they're going to have to come around twice, which they should do. But again, they'll be coming out of the pits once again, if that makes any sense. Carlo. And we should be on the lead lap. That's not going to be a question. Low on tires, Running low on tires. I would explain why we're wearing so much. Yeah, 12%. We should be able to get back to the... Uh, hits in the next few laps without wearing those tires. Oh yeah, we got two laps remaining on the tires, or the, the fuel. But we're all right, we're all right. Can we take two? No, we can't take two. We better come in for four. Just considering that it is a green flag run. I believe the entrance to the pit is this way, so we'll dive down and in. 
You're in the wrong pit lane. Oh, I guess not. Never mind. I thought you had to go all the way around. That's a big mistake. I think this is the first time I've actually had to do a green flag pit stop at uh, at uh, at Bristol. So into the pits we go this time. This should work. So that was probably a pretty big mistake there, going in the wrong pit. So that was definitely a Mark Martin if I've ever seen one. 15 seconds on the tires and fuel. That's a, a lap right there, and we probably lost a little bit more time just uh, faffing about, I guess as the Brits would say with the pits, but here we go, back out onto the racetrack, and we're going to see where we end up. It looks like Ryan Newman, who was the leader, is coming off into the pit, so that's very interesting. Yes, Ryan Newman is in. And we're back to 24th position as we're getting swarmed, and we are, I believe, a lap down, so yeah, we, uh, we made a bit of an error there. But pits are coming uh, once again. So they're going to have fresher tires than me. That's a concern, but again, we'll see how this all works. This could be very, very interesting because we're only lapped uh, behind sixth. So there's six cars ahead of us that have us a lap up, or a lap down. They're a lap up on us. Car ahead is fitting. As Hamlin comes in, we'll unlap ourselves from him. Austin Dillon is for position, as well as Clint Boyer, actually. I was wondering if these guys were lap cars, but they're not. They are for position. I guess I could have looked at the ticker for that information, but screw facts. Nobody needs facts as we work underneath Austin Dillon. And now Clint Boyer. 18 to go in the race. This is going to be quite fascinating how this all ends up working out as we make a little bit of contact with Boyer. In fact, that was for sixth position. Wow, okay, so I guess everybody pitted. I wasn't really, I guess I was so caught up in my own battles that I wasn't realizing how many positions we were gaining under the green flag. And as you can see, Denny Hamlin pulls out of the pits. We'll go around Jeffrey Earnhardt, Cody Ware, and... DJ Kennington, or at least tried to. So now we're really starting to see old tires versus new tires versus semi-worn tires. It's it's very, very uh, just congested and close. And it's Stenhouse who's leading. And I'll tell you what, Stenhouse, eight seconds I probably lost in the pits with my nonsense. And we're seeing the result of that right now because Stenhouse is leading this race. He's on my strategy and he looks like he is set for a victory right now, folks. We are gonna probably come home second unless something very much drastically changes. We'll see. There's still 14 laps to go. Nice long green right flag here. run here. I think this entire, oh no, I'm, I'm gonna jinx oh, myself because fitting. Brad Keselowski's in trouble. Is that gonna bring out the yellow? No, he gets it safely to pit lane. He had a tire issue. I thought the yellow was going to come out. It did not. I was about to say what a great green flag run we have had. The entire third stage, I believe, run under the green flag conditions. So it has led to very, very interesting racing here at Bristol. Thankfully, that did not change there. We are closing the gap pretty significantly here on Stenhouse. He must be caught in lap traffic, but the problem is to get up to Stenhouse, we'll have to go through that same lap traffic is going to be a big ask, but we'll see. Six seconds is now the gap, so it is closing down significantly as we're down here through one and two with 11 laps to go. On the brakes, get it down nice and easily. Hard on the throttle, can't quite get it off the corner of the way I'd to like go. to. to 10 laps remaining in today's race. This is incredibly intriguing. I don't know if it's as exciting to the viewers as it is for me, but this is incredibly intriguing how this is all going to work out. It's down to four seconds, so we are really closing it down here on Stenhouse. And Paul Menard is actually pretty close as well. Look at all this lap traffic. We're going to have to work our way through this without too much drama. As we slide it really, really deep into three and four. Off the corner we go. Blaney just out in front. Underneath him we go, Stay low. and hopefully clear him, not quite. Logano into the wall, second Penske car with trouble, and the yellow comes out. 
Wow, here we go. The shootout at Bristol with eight laps to go. It's Stenhouse, Menard, Newman, Eric Almirola, Daniel Suarez, Kyle Busch, Kevin Harvick will get a lucky dog and he will be back on the lead lap. Wow, that was almost a big mistake for pitting. We don't need any tires here. It's a straight shootout with eight cars on the lead lap. Here we go. Oh, it's not the Geico restart zone here. It's the Food City restart zone. Doesn't matter. We got an amazing restart. Four to go here at Bristol. With Stenhouse unable to respond, it looks like. We do have fresher tires than Stenhouse. He pitted earlier than us. Should. That yellow should have made it easy for everybody to make it to the end of the race. We'll have to see. Three laps to go. Menard. Holding station. One second behind. Eric Almirola, who's been the class of the field most of the day, despite the fact that he hasn't really led all that much because I led most of it on strategy. Uh, but he's up to fourth now. To go. We got two laps remaining in the race. Just kind of diving off the corners here, kind of driving in a little too deep, I would say. Off the throttle, a little bit of brake. Almost putting a one second gap on Stenhouse. Almost getting up into the wall. One to go, presented by Credit One Food City 500 Bank. Here we go. Are we going to get a victory at Bristol by driving a fairly and relatively clean race? I think we are off of turn number four. Checkers are out and we'll take win. Number three, I believe, of the season at Bristol. So a win, a stage win. Eric Almirola comes home third. A really great drive from him. He probably was deserving of the victory, but he couldn't quite pull it off. Look at how many laps down some of these cars are. Keselowski and Logano both had uh, tire issues during the last stages of that race. So it really, really made it interesting right there at the end with the uh, collisions and cautions. And uh, we got it. We got it. That was pretty cool. That was a fun race for sure. And the, the paycheck isn't quite as sweet as it would have been at another track. But hey, that's fine. We've already crossed the $10 million mark, which is cool with me. Let's take a look at the points. It's my fourth win. I said third initially. I guess I got caught up in the excitement there. Matt Kenseth as well has a win. So we've got four drivers uh, with wins. And they are locked into the playoffs, as it were. And Eric Almirola is now the leader on the points side of things. So here it is, the Bristol Motor Speedway Trophy. Fantastic to win in the Food City 500. And there's the old nationwide Chevrolet. Once again, on top, four wins this season. Pretty cool. So, yeah, the incentive, well, maybe the incentive contract is going to happen. Probably, uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Please don't. What in the heck is going on out there? Your driving is absolute garbage. You do this stuff every single week. If NASCAR doesn't suspend you, I guarantee somebody will teach you a lesson on the track. He freaking cracked up. Blaney, you are not an actor. He, I, I was believing him for a second there, but then he laughed in the middle of it. Ah, Richmond next. More short track racing. The Toyota Owners 400. Will we see quite the strategy race that we saw at Bristol? Who knows? Be sure to tune in for race number 10 at Richmond.